puts to order. We are back on the record in the matter of the state of Georgia versus Khalif Adams et al. and 22 SC 183572. All right, Mr. Stilwell, Mr. Botts, and Mr. Sharp. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. All right, Mr. Williams, Mr. Steele, Mr. Adams, and Mr. Renard. Good morning. All right, Mr. Kendrick and uh, Mr. Weinstein. Good morning. All right, Mr. Hugh and Mr. Matthews Jr. Good morning, sir. And Mr. Nichols and Mr. Harvey and Ms. Westmoreland, good morning. Mr. Ryan and Misty Williams, good morning. All right. Um, Mr. Brown, Mr. Smith, Mr. Houston, Mr. Atkins, and ladies, Ms. Lowe and Ms. Hill, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Sergeant Ingram Muller, jurors present? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Some of our jurors, Mr. Steele, I did in fact get your uh, email correspondence from yesterday. I did take a look at um, T versus the state of 252 Georgia, um, 354, um, and Sullivan versus the state of 311 Georgia, 835. Um, I'm of the opinion after reading those two cases, inconsistent with what. Um, um, this court will probably authorize this. You are correct that you cannot ask a witness a, a, like a detective. Hey, Detective Smith, what did Detective Green tell you? What did you, what did you learn from him? That would fall within that. However, if our witness here says, did you, uh, did you talk to Green? Without telling us what you talked to Green, what did you do as a result of that? That's, that would be proper. And I would allow that, but I'm going to, um, it doesn't really kind of, to explain conduct, the two cases that you mentioned, um, while an, another officer can't give testimony about what he got from another, from a, from a, from another officer to explain conduct. And, and in fact, in these two cases, Sullivan and, uh, T Sullivan in particular, the issue was that, the investigation was attacked, so the court authorized it, said it was harmless. So I'm not going to let the state do that, and you can certainly object. No, and, and I, I thank you for making that clear. It was just yesterday, and it was right when we wrote, if there was a question, maybe two, whenever the record shows that the prosecutor was announcing, well, this explains the law enforcement officer's conduct, and that, as you know. Well, as long as he doesn't Conduct, he can, I mean, as long as he just doesn't state what it, somebody else told him to relate to what he did, but he can certainly say, you know, uh, you know, as a result of his interactions with other law enforcement officers or witnesses or the like, what he followed up on, that would not be, that would not be improper. So, and, and I thank you. I'm just reading out of T in Division 1, third paragraph up from the uh, end of it, and it says, it will be seen that only in rare circumstances will the conduct of the investigating officer need to be explained. And but you're but you're cutting it off, Mr. Steele. You're looking you're not looking at an overall context, okay? That was one officer who who got information from another, he testified what somebody else told him. Yes, and the reason that that was the court said it was rare because it's what he said to that particular detective that the court clarified, and that was told to the jury. So this is a little different. If he says, for example, 
um, he's going to, his investigation was predicated on X, Y, and Z. As long as he doesn't state what that was from another detective, that would be, I think that would, that would not violate that or not be hearsay. I agree with what you say about hearsay. This is what I'm taking, and then obviously we'll go with what this Honorable Court says over objection if needed. But just to continue reading what I said, if I may, it will be seen that only in rare instances will the conduct of an investigated officer need to be explained, as in practically every case, the motive, intent, or state of mind of such an officer will not be matters concerning which the truth must be found. At the heart, a criminal prosecution is designed to find the truth of what a defendant did and on occasion of why he did it. It is most unusual that a prosecution will properly concern itself with why an investigating officer did something. That's what I'm asking the court to consider as we go along. I do hear you. I'm not, I'm not challenging you. I do agree, obviously, um, not hearsay should not never come in. I agree with that or confrontation clause depending upon the statement. But I'm going a little further. I think that what you're saying, and I heard you say, just make the objection as we go. But the fact that I'm just using his name, a former detective, or excuse me, a retired detective, Dennis, he says, well, and the statement's getting into this, I believe, maybe I'm wrong. Well, I knew that there was a beef between um, Little Wayne and Jeffrey Williams. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but I believe that that, I believe that, that was important. So I wanted to watch people from YSL, and these are the people from YSL. And what I'm saying is his belief doesn't matter. The fact that maybe he watched closely and saw Jimmy Winfrey um, almost got to strike him with a car, that, that's in terms. That is my position. And that's why I sent you the case. And I appreciate the court, as always, taking time to, uh, um, you know, discuss today with us. And okay. Your, your, you know, your inside your position. Thank you. All right, sir. Anything, ma'am? Your Honor, uh, just briefly, which was that when an instruction is given and the officer follows an instruction, um, we're not offering the instruction um, to explain the officer's conduct as much as for its effect on the listener as a result of the instruction. Um, and I believe that that's the way that we've been doing that. What I heard just now was not um, a sequential set of events that occurred. We, we did not, um, investigator Dennis didn't testify that there was a beef between YSL and Young Thug. He testified that they were given instructions not to let some people in the club. I understand. Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right. So our name summer our jurors for us, please. Can we get um, Detective Dennis to come and rejoin us, please? Can't video him. Okay. All right. And if you want to video me, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> or Christina. <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. Ladies and gentlemen, jury, good morning. morning. All right, we're going to continue with the presentation of the state's witness. Um, Detective Dennis, uh, good morning, sir. You're still on the road. Good morning. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't have a green light over here. I'm going to utilize the one at the table until we get some batteries in this microphone. Okay, all right. All right. Detective Dennis, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. When we left off yesterday, you were talking about, um, because of your knowledge of certain events that had occurred prior to the night of April 25th into the morning of April 26, 2015. Do you recall that? Yes. And the last question I believe that I asked you was, what events were you investigating in order of the date of occurrence? You want me to start? That gave you knowledge about, that you shared with Detective Racy during this Cobb County investigation. Starting January, the, starting January 2015. Oh. So on January 10th, uh, we... In order that the events occurred. Starting January 5th, uh, there was an incident at Club Crucial, which turned into January 6th. What events took place on January the 6th that you investigated? Uh, no. Injection, and then it falls to hearsay. Um, I'm going to overrule the injection, not the question. And to... Thank you, Judge. To be clear, Detective Dennis, do not tell anyone what anyone said specifically. Just tell the jury what events you were investigating that we inve occurred January the 6th. We investigated the shooting. It started with a fight, which led to a shots fired call uh, that we began to investigate. Where was the location of the shots fired call? Club Crucial. And where is Club Crucial, please? Zone 1, west side of the city. Is it near 285 and what we speak back yeah, here? Yeah. Can you be more specific? It's on, uh, what, I think, Donald Lee, or Donald Lee Holloway on 285, I believe. Okay. And is that at 2517 Donald Holloway? Yes. Okay. So, continue with the events that you were investigating. That's uh, that. I believe January 8th. We had a shooting incident at uh, 988 Confederate. Can we back up a little bit? You were talking about what you were investigating on January the 6th. Would you tell the jury what you did to investigate events of January the 6th after there was a shooting? Anytime there's a shooting or anything in the city, our supervisor will either, A, we get a daily report of incidents that happen in the city. The supervisor might say, hey, we had this or we had that. Um, at Club Crucial, we often had incidents Tuesday morning from overnight. And so from our unit, we would start looking into it or looking to see if it's related to anything else that we got going on. And so it was no different with that. So using the board behind you as a timeline, would you please use this black marker and if the first 30 ticks or the first 30 days of January and so forth, um, use that black marker and draw a line up and write the words January 6th on the 6th tick of January. If you could do that with your back, not to the jury, that would be great. <laughs> Alright. Did you I need you to draw it up and long so I can see from back here. January 6th? Yes. Alright. You can take your seat. Thank you. Where 
were the shots fired, did you say? The reports of the shots fired? Parking lot of Club Crucial, in and around Club Crucial. What is Club Crucial? A nightclub in the city. Do you know, are you familiar with Club Crucial? Were you familiar with Club Crucial prior to January 6, 2015? Yes. Would you tell the jury, when you say a nightclub, what days that you were familiar with the club being in operation? Club Crucial is basically an inner city hood nightclub that guys go to Monday nights. We were familiar with Club Crucial because they have uh, uh, Queen of the Ring Monday nights. All right. I need you to slow down just a little bit. <laughs> um, when you say we, who are you talking about? M myself and my partner, my unit, uh, Atlanta Police Department. And when you say Monday nights, what was it that you talked about with Monday nights? It's called Queen of the Ring. What is Queen of the Ring? Queen of the Ring is based. Uh, Mr. Adams, I'm over here. That's uh, I'll overrule your objection. What is Queen of the Ring? Queen of the Ring is lady boxers. Uh, the girls basically put on gloves and box, and usually the guys watch or bet on it or. Enjoy the festivities of it. Was Antrevia Smith one of the fighters in Queen of the Ring? Objection to leading. I'm also saying the judge is a form of grace. Are you familiar with <clears throat> Antrevia Smith? Yes. Are you familiar with Antrevia Smith as a result of this investigation that you're talking to the jury about? Yes. Did Antrevia Smith ever participate in Queen of the Ring? Yes. Oh, rule, sir. Yeah, oh, rule, sir. What role did Club Crucial play in the investigations that you're describing to the jury? A lot of our incidents began at Club Crucial. A lot of Fights, a lot of shootings began at Club Crucial. Were you investigating in your capacity as a detective with the gang unit any gangs that you felt were affiliated or congregated at Club Crucial? Yes, the thing about Club Crucial. The help before you go into there. <laughs> so you said yes. Yes. Which ones? Every, pretty much every gang in the city. YSL, If Gang, Rolling Sixties, Gangster Disciples, <laughs> Goodfellas. Now you will explain. You said the thing about Club Crucial. Club Crucial, just to bring it to perspective, is one of those places where you would think that if we had a problem, we would avoid each other. That Club Crucial is the total opposite. Everybody, it's almost like if you're not there, you're not, you nobody in the city. And so on Monday nights, pretty much. Most gang members that we had dealings with would go to Club Crucial. Um, some nights it would be peaceful. Some nights it would not. Sometimes it would uh, spill over. Um, when you talk about some nights it would spill over, what do you mean? We have often had incidents at Club Crucial. Tuesday mornings when we would come to work, we would have uh, shootings at Club Crucial or fights or incident reports from Club Crucial. When you mentioned YSL and IF gang, mm -hmm. uh, were you investigating those at different times or at the same time? At January 6th, we weren't investigating any of them. We just had an incident. As a result of further investigations later in 2015. We, as we investigated after the January 10th, which was the murder of Donovan Thomas, it led to us to backtrack and look at what led up to and what was coming afterwards. Okay. And so as you look at the days before January the 10th, uh, did you look at January 6th or investigate January 6th with relation to any two particular groups? Yeah. Hold on. Um, that was Mr. Sharp and Mr. Adams. I'm both leaving. I'll stay in this form. 
Did you investigate any of the groups that you named a second ago for anything related to January the 6th? Yes. What groups? Englewood Family Bloods, If Gang, and YSA. Are Englewood Family and If Gang the same thing? Both of them are blood uh, gangs. Uh, at one point, they were all friends. Yeah. Yeah. Your Honor, what I'm doing is talking about specifically matters he investigated. Oh, sir. Now, when you investigated January. Excuse me, sir. Counsel, if I can hear you talking about this, so please just do that. All right, go ahead. Thank you. When you investigated the groups that you just named for matters that occurred on January the 6th, did you investigate them acting together? I'm going to object. Uh, the one outside the county of the testimony is not going to be Is that correct? Number two, uh, the investigation is uh, irrelevant under T. Um, I'm going to just... Yeah. Wait. Your Honor, as to the first... I'm going to sustain one objection. That's the... Uh, the you need to lay a little more foundation. Okay. It's basis. Okay. okay. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to overrule the other objection. As to beyond his testimony. Oh, that's expert. Okay. All right. Before we get deeper into the six. What other dates were you, or events were you investigating that you spoke of earlier yesterday um, prior to talking with Detective Racy of DeKalb County? Cobb County. Cobb County. Uh, January 8th, we had a shooting at 988 Confederate uh, involving an if gang member that was, his vehicle was shot up. Uh, 988 Confederate, would you? into these acts that you're describing, did you ever have occasion to investigate anything at Trestle Tree Apartments? This, well, we had another incident there in October okay. of 2015. Now, the January the 8th incident, would you tell the jury um, the Victim, you were investigating. Uh, the victim was Darren Mills. All and right. I, uh, and was Darren Mills as a result of the investigations that you conducted personally prior to speaking with Detective Racy? Was Darren Mills involved with either of the groups that you mentioned? Your Honor, yeah. I'm going to object again as to the form of the hearing that is not the witness who testified to it. Any information that he testified to would be hearsay and inadmissible. If it comes from someone else, also based on the obligation clause by the I, I'm, I'm going to stand objection to form. You can rephrase it. Mr. Sharp, do you have an objection? I agree with this fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Would you to allow me one moment? Sure.
Did you ever talk to Darren Mills during this investigation? Yes. And do you know in what way he was a victim on January the 8th? How did you investigate him as a victim? Your Honor, I would. A rule, sir. A rule, sir. You may answer the question. In what way were you investigating Darren Mills as a victim? What? Not what happened, just was he shot, killed? No. What happened? How was he investigating? He was in the area and someone shot up his vehicle. Good. Your Honor. A rule, sir. On January 8th, that someone shot up Darren Mills' vehicle. Correct. Would you write underneath 988 Confederate Darren Mills or DM dash B as in what's the B? As in Victor? On January the 8th, did anything happen at Club Crucial before or after that shooting? That you investigated on January eighth, on January fifth and the sixth was Club Crucial. January eighth was nine eighty eight Confederate, and then we also had another incident. All right, let me back up. Are you familiar with, as a result of your personal investigations with the gang unit, six seventy five Metropolitan Parkway? Yes. All right. What is six seventy five Metropolitan Parkway during twenty fifteen, January twenty fifteen, when you were investigating? At the time. 675 Metropolitan is a loft space with a bunch of lofts. On one side of the building, you have the vaults recording studio. On the other side, you have the TIG recording studio. We investigated a shooting at the TIG studio on January 8th. And would you tell the jury what TIG studio is based on your investigation? TIG studios is Think as a Game studio, and basically uh, it's where uh, Donovan Thomas, Rachel McQuan, uh, YFN, or Rayshawn Bennett, YFN Lucci recorded. All right. Would you write um, just under <coughs> DFSB TIG? In relation to that, I'm going to show you what's already been admitted as state's exhibit 21. <coughs> I, I, indigo. Okay. Depicted in 21 India, India. Yes. What is that? 675 Metropolitan, that's the front. Okay. Let's go to 20 India, India. Is 20 India, India the address of 21 <clears throat> India, India? Yes. All right. Let's go to 19 India, India. Is that also the same studio? Yes. Go backwards. 18. 18 India, India. Is that also the same studio? Yes. Are you able to indicate based on 18 India, India, the size that you were just describing, or is it not shown in this photograph? It's not shown. This is the front. If you come into the, the structure, you basically got to go up a hill, make a turn, and then that's the front. That's where the Managers' offices or something. The studio, actual studios, line go all the way back, and so it's probably it could be twenty-five, fifty. I don't know on each side, and each people have different loft spaces. 
And as you're doing things with your hands that the record can't reflect, what is it that you're doing with your hands? Space is all. Can I use the? I don't miss. You can flip over to another page and diagram for the jury as long as you initial it at the bottom what you're describing as it relates to 675 Metropolitan Park. Yes. Please take your place in front of the diagram 675 Metropolitan Studio and the best clear camera I can get Well, this is the front. These are the locks, and they go all the way back on both sides. And when you have on the diagram 675, what is that meant to denote? That's the front. That's the picture you just showed. That's the front of it. The red brick where the manager's office, that's the front of it. 
As you drive back, these are the lost spaces that make up both sides of the structure. And where is the Metropolitan Parkway in relation to the front of the building, if you recall? This is the street. The street. Huh? Yeah. And it basically sits right across the street from the uh, Atlanta City Credit Union, which is here. And so the, I remember later, please write this Metropolitan Parkway. I'll put Metro, you want me to spell it? Yes. <laughs> and because some of us, I will challenge in the back. Could you use this larger marker to draw instead of the one you're using now? Which side was thinking the game studio's on? Not to be exact, but it was something like here. And what was on the other side? Not to be exact, the vault. Let's see. What is the vault? A recording studio. And based on the investigations you conducted, did anyone involved in the cases you described, you all investigated prior, you're talking to Detective Tracy, record at the vault? Yes. Who? Young Thug, the YSL guys hung out at the vault. If gangs hung out at TIG. Okay. On January 8th, did any of your investigations include property belonging to Dupont de Lamar, or Rich Homie Kwan? Yes. And what property of Rich Homie Kwan or Dupont de Lamar? His vehicle got shot. I'm going to object in so much as it calls for hearsay. Under Hassan, twenty twenty four Lexus, twenty twenty four Georgia. Y'all come on.
I will rule the objection. You may continue. And, Your Honor, may I ask what we're going to do that your last question that I was asking? Detective Dennis, You may. Mm -hmm. Ms. Weaver? Mm -hmm. On January 8th, I'm going to show you what has already been admitted as state's exhibit 22, 22 India, India through 33 India, India. And ask you, were these, was well, the deal depicted in that set of photographs uh, a part of your investigation? I personally have never seen these photos. Okay. What property of the What property of the Pontes Lamar did you investigate? Did you shot? We found the calls for service in reference to the incident. Uh -huh. And at the time that we found it, uh, we basically were able to establish that the incident happened. We didn't necessarily, the, the actual incident came in as damage to property. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Based on that answer, <clears throat> like I said, Dennis, I think that that changes the odds of what the foundation of ruling in the conspiracy. Yeah, not the investigator who investigated this case. It does not call into witness. Yeah, yeah, I disagree. Thank you. I'm already objecting, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. 
your investigation, did you learn of any other persons who recorded at Dinkins and Gaming Studios? Yes. Would you give the jury the names of the other people through your investigation you determined recorded at Dinkins and Gaming Studios? Uh, Rayshawn Bennett or AKA Wife and Lucci also recorded at the studio as well. And do you know of any other persons besides Young Thug who recorded at the vault? Yes. Would you tell the jury the names of those people uh, through your investigation you determined recorded at the vault? I'm going to object. Again, it's a call for hearsay. I stand a question. You can rephrase, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. How many people, other than Young Thug, did you learn through your investigation recorded at the vault? You know, same objection. Oh, rule, sir. Ask for a continued objection. You guys know me, sir. From our investigation, it was a functioning studio, so several artists recorded at the studio. Through your investigation, did you ever determine whether anyone incident of a female that was associated with Mr. Williams. We believed it was his girlfriend at the time. It came up as a shots fire call. We tried to investigate uh, to find out, but we had no reporting victims or anything of that sort. And was this call one of what you would call a property call or just- Damage to property. So it didn't have any damage or anything. It just came up as a shots fire. So it was just listed at- to one call or error or anything that is not his or his investigation will be hearsay and anything that is object. Yeah. Under the sign, you're still talking about. What were your objections, sir? Go ahead. We basically located the shots fire call. Uh, we looked into it like we looked in every call that we received. And did you ever find a picture? We did not. Did you ever find a projectile? We did not. And did you ever locate the person who made the call? We did not. Did you endeavor to do either of those things? We did all of that. Okay. And I object to the relevance and has to be stricken based on all the responses. Oh, sir. <coughs> after January the after the January the ninth. What was the next incident that you all investigated that you did not look before talking to the press? The murder of Donald Trump. And where, <coughs> based on your investigation, did that murder take place? Uh, 330 McDaniel Street, McDaniel and North Side Drive. Is that in Pulse County? Yes. Now, would you on that map draw a line up, on a timeline, draw a line up from the Would 
Have shots. And what was the flyer that you said that you located? It was for uh, an event that was at the location. It's a hotel where they had a good location. Do you remember what kind of event? I don't. Okay. Now, would you draw a line up from the tent? And write the words Donovan Thompson for DC murder. I'm going to give you a chance to take a seat for a little bit. Chronologically, what was the next event that you investigated as part of the gang unit that you were aware of prior to talking to Detective Grace? The night of the 10th rolling into the 11th. What was the location of the incidents that you investigated the night of the 10th rolling into the 11th? I believe it was 88 Van Ira and Hendricks. 193 or 198 Hendricks. And what type of incident took place at those locations? Buildings, houses shot up. And who in your investigation was connected with those locations? Objection, both for hearsay. I see. You're on under quick and the sign of this is. Hey, I'll roll the objection. Who in your investigation was connected to these locations, if anyone? These were family members of Kenneth Copeland. Would you write on the map, like one line down from January 11th, and write shots? 88 Van Ira, 193 Hendricks, and KC. You may have seats. For these locations of KC's family or people? Yes. Okay. And were these locations the targets of the shots that were fired? Turn out, Jeff. Is Hold on, hold on. Um, that was Mr. Adams and Mr. Sharp. I'll be afraid. Uh, I stand objection. Did the reports that you investigated originate from the occupants? Of eighty eight Van Ira and one ninety three hundred. In other words, you understand that question? Yes. Oh, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Chronologically, what was the next event that you investigated? I believe it was Ruby Harper, thirty four or something, Ruby Harper. Did you investigate an event at 34, 349 Cleveland Avenue on January the 12th, 2016? I, I stand over. Oh, I'm going to rule the objection. Was that one of the events involved in your investigation uh, that you <clears throat> conducted prior to talking to Detective Brady? Yes. Who was affiliated or connected with 349 Cleveland Avenue? That's basically in a wide sale territory area. Okay. And is that something that through your investigations you determined as a detective? I stand your objection. How were you able to determine that or make that statement to the jury? Based on being a detective and a gang detective. This is. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. 
Thank you. What was the incident that you investigated um, that occurred on January 12th at 3.49 Cleveland Avenue? Shots fired. And who did you investigate as the perpetrator? I don't recall. Do you recall who the victims? I not off the top of my head. Okay. Would you draw a line up from January the twelfth? We're showing you a copy of that refresher recollection. Yes. All right. Your Honor, I'm going to approach the witness with what we have written as State's Exhibit 114, Echo Sub R. Oh, yeah. And not for admission, just for the record. I understand. Take a look at 114 Echo R on the page that I've turned to without reading out loud. And if you would look at number where my finger is pointing, read it. When you finish reading it, look up and tell me if your memory is refreshed as to who you were investigating as a victim. Yes. And does it refresh your memory as to who you were investigating as an assailant? Yes. All right. First, tell the jury who, without reading, who it was you were investigating as the victim in this particular case. The victim was Summer Good. And who did you investigate as the assailant? Kelvin Watts. And through your investigation, did you determine any connection between Summer Good and anyone that you saw at the compound the night of April 25th, 2015? That's Summer Guess. And who was the person you determined had connection with Summer Good that you saw the compound that night? Quindary Zachary. Did you investigate any other? What was the next in event that you investigated chronologically that you were aware of prior to talking to Detective Grayson about the shooting? 
from April 26, 2015. Yes, sir. I tell you what, do you want? I understand on good authority that we need to take a comfort break. So um, why don't we go ahead and do that? Um, let's take 15 minutes, okay? Um, and it, sir, um, check your dance. We'll go ahead and let you take 15 minutes as well, okay? All right. All rise. Please be seated. All right, Mr. Sharp, what do you wish to tell the court? Your Honor, I don't, I don't know where this is going, but I think that this is definitely something before the state goes down this road that they should have litigated before attempting to. Should, what? I'm sorry, sir. Litigated outside the presence of the jury before attempting to do this. I am saying right now, I don't know where the state's going with this. But if I hear my client's name, Shannon Stillwell, or any of people that are associated with my client's name uh, being listed as someone that was being investigated or suspected of a crime, I'm moving for an immediate mistrial because that would be highly improper. Who's suspected of crimes that are not charged, not convicted, being listed through an investigator is Complete violation of 404B, 404A, and is is uh, prejudicial and completely improper. We're we're trying this case through hearsay right now. I'm surprised the state didn't ask investigator Dennis. Well, what happened in the Donovan Thomas case? Just tell us all about what you learned through hearsay, because that's where we're headed. And to just say who's the victim, who's the suspect. And who's the perpetrator? Yeah, who's the perpetrator? That's highly improper. And right now, the only perpetrator that's been listed is Kelvin Watts. And I think that was improper. But I'm saying as it goes forward, as soon as a name that's associated with my client or my client's name comes out, I'm moving for an immediate mistrial. And I believe it's very warranted. Thank you, sir. No, I'm going in that objection also. And well, I heard rules in effect, so what else do you want to add to that, sir? Well, I want to point to uh, the state side of the case early, the Hassan case. Uh, I've had a chance to sit in and read through, and that is actually instructive to, to the court. There is a difference in what the court uh, applied in, in Hassan and what's going on right here. But quick is the better case in terms of the court's interpretation of what a detective may testify to. So I have to read both in conjunction. So we'll disagree about our interpretations as to that, but um, I feel that the, I've made the correct ruling in respect to that. And you can still object as to, as to the, as to the foundation, but. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's my position. And then I, I share the same concern that Mr. Mr. Sharp has, which is that, and that's why I said, they have witnesses that they can call to testify about the individual incidents. It is relevant, it comes in, and no witness to testify. But they can't simply hold off have Detective Dennis and just by asking the questions in a certain way, saying, What is your investigation show? He can't just tell he can testify to uh to, to the end result of the investigation, but he can't get around hearsay by simply saying that I know that this person is a perpetrator, this person is a victim. All of that comes from hearsay. And in some case, that detective was not allowed. Of course, that detective did not testify about information gleaned from other detectives or, or, or information gleaned from the, from the investigation. It was very clear in the side as to what was admissible and what was not. And what he is testifying to right now is not admissible. They can't call those witnesses. And they are trying, they've got 200 witnesses on the witness list. They're trying to get around for the law for the by testifying, by trying this case, as Mr. Shaw said, very aptly, by and then and that deprives us of the ability to confront those witnesses. If someone, if the detective says, well, 
uh, this person got the term to be a perpetrator, this person got the term to be, to be a victim. We have no way of confronting that. It is just coming in based on these PSA testimonies. Okay, all right, state. Your Honor, quick is the, as the court has pointed out, quick is the most on point authority that we have for our questions that we are asking Detective Dennis. We are, as Mr. Adams correctly stated, we are intentionally not asking him who did this, who did that. We simply are asking him, who did he investigate as the perpetrator? Who did you investigate as the victim? And later, when we get into other questions, we will have a proper basis and foundation for his knowledge of these other questions related to incidents that occurred after the April 25th, 2016, 2015, April 26th and 25th, 2015 incident involving the shooting of Lil Wayne's bus and how he aided Detective Racy in that investigation. Previously, Detective Dennis was asked questions about why he became involved in a Cobb County incident. Detective Dennis testified aptly that as a result of events that he was already investigating, he was able to do X, Y, and Z. There are certain steps that he took, certain places that he went that involve the incidents that he is simply speaking to the jury about his who, where, and what he investigated, not offering any statements by anyone. We're not arguing this is that, he pled guilty to that, and we're not gonna offer any improper hearsay or testimony that might infringe on anyone's rights in this case. All right, counsels, um, take your break. We'll see you in a few minutes.